Happy rainy December 1st here in Florida from the Craft Castle. My name is Matt. I'm going to give a little video update of what's been going on with Beast Mode over the past few months since my last video. Uh, actually, probably more like what's not been going on, but definitely have had a chance to get a few decent sized projects completed and partially completed. So I'm going to go over that in the video. So, you know, being married with three kids, uh, kids in school, keeping up with their extracurricular stuff their homework, my work schedule, my wife's work schedule. It doesn't leave a whole lot of time to, to get out here, as much time as I'd like uh, to get out here and work on the car, but family first as far as I'm concerned. So the time that I get out here, I uh, try to you know make the best use of that time as possible. So, but got a lot of things done and uh, one of them is which I've kind of cleaned up the garage and reorganized a few things. So right now it's kind of a disaster. Everything's scattered about because I've I've been working on the car too, uh, but re epoxy a section of the floor, um, working on the Volvo. I've got the Volvo rear end out of it and a Ford 88, uh, almost completely mocked up and in, and I'll go over that in the video a little bit. Done some things a little non-traditional for what some Volvo guys do when they swap into 88, and I'll talk about that some. Uh, but you know, prepping for Christmas, so I've uh, got some time off that I'll be able to get out here and then I've got some time off today. I'm going to be out here working on the car. So I'll talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing today. So um, hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for tuning in. So when it comes to garage projects, like I said, I've been cleaning the place up and reorganizing. Uh, I do coatings for a living. So one of the things that I've done here in the, in the craft castle is I've recoated a one of the bays of the garage with a metallic epoxy uh, that we offer um, pretty fancy stuff I plan on keeping the car parked over here from time to time once it's done I'll leave the the middle bay uh, for the workshop bay so this middle bay is a polyamid epoxy with the aliphatic urethane top coat that stuff is hard as a rock very durable um, this metallic epoxy, not quite as durable, but definitely a lot more fancy. Uh, great place to park your, your Maserati or your, you know, your V8 swap Volvo. So, but I've moved some cabinets around and hung a new cabinet and done some miscellaneous things on this side. This is going to kind of be my, my workshop side where I can take care of things in a slightly cleaner atmosphere than some of the other areas of the garage. So, uh, wheels, let's talk wheels. I definitely, uh, Mo been moving on from that uh part of the reason is doing this you know ford rear end swap but um much as i love the old ccws um just just not been real happy overall with the fact that they were 18s uh it's great for doing road course stuff uh autocross but i'm kind of taking the car in a different direction i've thought about you know i'm not going to have much of a chance to get out to the road course uh just in my schedule i'd love to do that ultimate street car um, Optima Ultimate Streetcar stuff, but uh, the location of those, the money invested, uh, I just don't think, I had to be honest with myself, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get much into that. So this car is mainly going to be a, you know, a local cruise in, local drag strip, you know, hang out on the weekends and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to move away from the 18 inch wheel and move over into a little bit different style. These are going to be the fronts. I don't have the backs ordered yet because I, since the rear axle is not quite done, I want to make sure that I measure for the right back space. But these are a 17 by eight with a five and a half inch back space. Uh, I'm going to run a 235 tire on that. The back wheels will be the same rim, but it's going to be a, a 15 by 10 uh, with a back space yet to be determined. So, and on that one, I plan on going running a 275 50 15 drag radial. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the, this month, I'll have all that done and in. So the axle should be in this coming week. So, uh, I, as you, if you recall, you might, from my other videos, remember that I did have some drag radials. These are a 16 inch. Um, the only reason I'm not keeping these is because those wheels are a Ford, I'm sorry, a Volvo bolt pattern. Um, and they don't make those wheels that I just bought in a 16 inch. So these wheels and tires have actually already been sold. They ship out on Monday to a Volvo guy up in Maine who's got a, a V8 swap Volvo still with his uh, Volvo rear axle. So made him a sweet deal. He couldn't pass it up. I don't blame him. Practically gave him away. There's a few miles. These things maybe only have about 300 miles on them. 
Uh, there's this, two of the CCWs. Those are actually going to the powder coaters shop today to get the, the rubber taken off the, the rim so that I can get those shipped out. Uh, my potential buyer is supposed to come through with some money this coming week. So this is kind of the workshop area of the, of the shop. It is, like I said, a disaster right now, but I have been getting out here uh, in the evenings and working on different things. So when, when all my tools are up, that's a nice stainless bench there. Uh, but I have put down or put in a drill press station and a bandsaw station and got a nice big heavy duty vice. So, um, definitely got plenty of paint sticks over there. Uh, those always come in handy, but, um, yeah, it's kind of a mess right now, but you know, I know where everything's at and that's what counts. So, um, but as far as the Volvo goes, uh, one of today's projects, um, I'm actually going to be replacing the front hubs. I've ordered some hubs from uh, Ben B over at B&E. Uh, he sells a redrilled 240 hub to whatever, basically whatever bolt pattern you want. So I just ordered new hubs drilled from him. And, and I'm going to take these hubs off and obviously send them back to him for a core credit. Uh, but like I said, I'm switching to the Ford pattern, which is 5x114. Um, ben, I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, once I get my core back, I'll only be about 55 bucks invested into a pair of these, um, plus shipping. But, uh, once I, you know, I ordered them on Monday, I had them like on Wednesday. Ben was crazy fast with getting those things to me. Uh, so I do have some new studs. I'm going to get those pressed in today and get these hubs put on these old ones taken off and hopefully get the brakes and everything back together in what little bit of time that I've got today. So for the back axle, the 8.8, um, Pretty much where I'm at right now, it's it's everything's welded and in place. Um, just waiting on the axles. Like I said, those are going to be in sometime this week. So I've done a little, something a little bit different than what a lot of Volvo guys do. Um, let me get under here so you can see. What most people do is they'll take a an Explorer rear end, which has a longer side and a shorter side, and they will shorten the long side to be the same length as the short side, and just put another short side shaft in it and be done with it. And ultimately that makes the rear axle be, uh, I think about an inch and a half wider than the Volvo axle was originally. So I've narrowed it, this axle to be about a half an inch shorter in width than the original Volvo axle. Um, the reason why I did that is because I wanted to be able to run a little bit deeper dish wheel. Uh, I'm actually planning on mini tub in the car just a tad uh, we've got this space between the the frame rail if you want to call it that that i'm gonna we're gonna take about an inch maybe or so out of that uh and bring that inner fender well in just a tad uh so that's and that'll just allow me to run a little bit deeper dish wheel just because that's the look that i like so i like that lip so uh i don't like the very high positive offset stuff on you know cars are going to have drag radials on it that's just a personal preference so uh but the rear end did so like i said come out of a ford explorer what i've got in the center chunk there is a 355 with just a standard ford track lock uh the axles are coming from quick performance um i did put that rear end together myself uh i said i don't suggest that you do it yourself but you know if you like working on things and you've got the right tools to do it um, you know, why send it to somebody else? I'd try to stand by the mantra that if somebody else can do it, I can do it. Uh, now it might not come to building satellites or rockets, but when it comes to mechanical stuff on cars, that's kind of the way I look at things and just get in there and try to knock it out yourself. So, I mean, I'm not the best welder in the world, but I can, you know, make stuff stick and work. So, uh, I do have some friends that are really good welders that I trusted on, when we shortened that rear axle, I had him TIG that stuff up for me. Did a great job. But uh, for the bracketry, uh, the upper, that's kind of a, a stock upper mount. I did you continue to use the IPD uh, upper bars that I had on the car originally for the lower bars. I just used some threaded DOM tubing and some Himes. Uh, I've got a buddy of mine with a lathe, and he knocked out where to go. There we go. He knocked out a couple of bushings for me to keep that centered up. And for the lower brackets, uh, there are companies that make lower lower control arm brackets. Uh, they're upwards of a hundred bucks and over. Um, I just bought some some plate steel that was already pre-drilled, 
and so I had these were you know two separate pieces and then I welded a, a back plate on it for, for more strength um, so that's gonna be a little bit low of a bracket I'm actually gonna be cutting off this bottom area um, these are the only three holes I'm gonna be using for adjustments and I suspect I'm only gonna need these upper two this top one up here is too close to the axle to actually work into one of these two is probably what I'm gonna be using for my what little bit of instant center adjustment it'll give me uh, but I'm not gonna be some serious throw down street outlaw guy either so uh, just a little bit of track time and it's mostly a street car so uh, but so I saved some money you know putting those brackets together myself um, thanks to my buddy Brett with his nice little rear end stand here that let me borrow that definitely helps uh, get things in position and lining up uh, getting everything all these brackets and stuff lined up I had this sweet uh, jig that I bought for lining everything up uh, this thing is awesome from from lead mine or lead mine products it bolts onto the back of the axle and um, where the you know the, the diff cover goes and you can get all kind of different measurements off of it uh, center line pinion center line housing center line differential center line and it allows you to also measure the ultimately the axle length that you need for however much you shorten the um, rear end so about 38 bucks or something like that on ebay uh, definitely definitely something that makes it easier for axle measuring if you're going to do something non-standard like what i did so that's pretty much all that's been going on with the car the interior is still kind of halfway torn apart not touched anything on the engine uh Hadn't even started it, honestly, in probably two months. So somehow or another, my radiator has developed a very slight leak, and that really upsets me. Um, so I've got to figure that out. Hopefully I can brace it or fix it and get it rock and rolling and not have to buy another one because that radiator really is only about 2,000 miles old. But it's definitely over two years old, so <clears throat> I suspect it's going to be out of warranty. But... Um, so kind of a hopeful timeline if I set goals is to, like I said, have this rear end done and the car on the ground. <clears throat> Can't order the back wheels until I get the axles. I want to double check that measurement uh, on the back spacing uh, and then get in there and do that little bit of cutting and, and you know, welding on the, that inner fender well for the tubbing. Uh, so hopefully I can get it back down on the ground uh, and a drive shaft ordered. By the end of the month, that would be a nice goal, and then that would give me a you know a couple months to of time, which hopefully won't take that long. But to, just to drive the car around the my local streets here and try and get the the tune a little bit more in tune than just the idle tune, what we've got going on right now. Uh, so you know maybe by springtime I'll be putting some paint on this car and getting it ready for for the summertime heat of Florida driving around, but. That's pretty much where we're at, so it's been a slow go, but that's how sometimes projects go. So um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've had a few new subscribers, and uh, sorry I've been so lackadaisical with getting videos up, but again, hadn't really been out here busting my chops on it a whole lot. So, But I thank you for everybody that watches, and if anybody's got any questions, definitely don't hesitate to uh, post them, and I'll do my best to answer Alrighty guys, until next time, Merry Christmas.